Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin, and we're here for another uh, installment or episode of Within the Barons, our interview series. And today we have Chris Tansky from Fright Rags. How are you doing, Chris? Good. How are you, Dustin? I'm great. I know we were just uh, kind of talking about, you know, our 4th of July and everything and watching movies, but, you know, we're horror fans. We're always, we're always watching movies, aren't we? <laughs> There's yes. never a time <laughs> I'm not watching a movie, unless I'm working or doing this. Well, with the pandemic, when I started working from home, it was just, I just, I cr cranked through like three or four a day, just had them on in the background while I was working. And, and uh, I just caught up on a lot of stuff I had missed or just rewatched like comfort blanket movies that I didn't really have to pay attention to and just yeah. could have on in the background and just know it by heart and the scenes and so forth. Yeah, that's that's pretty much like what I was doing too, and and trying to catch up. Even like I feel like um, is where I am. We're like, we're kind of back to normal, you know. Uh, everybody's you know kind of chugging along and and sure. doing their things. Yeah. And our movie theaters are doing pretty well over here. And we have a drive, and I like to try to go oh, to nice. at least once or twice a month if I can. Um, and I don't know what it is, but I'm just having a really hard time going to see all these new releases, and and it kind of sucks because I was so know into the streaming services because i think they just i don't know babied me too much and being like here you go we're releasing it you can watch it at home so now i'm so like stuck at home that when a movie is like yeah. in the theater like, exclusive wait. it's like oh, i wanted to go to the theaters but do i want to go in my car and go over there right <laughs> Put on now clothes yeah exactly <laughs> so um yeah that, that's kind of where i am right now like i still gotta go see black phone everybody's been saying it's so good um, so I'm trying to see it this weekend. Um, so I'm hoping everything you know kind of aligns on that. But um, have you seen anything good recently that you uh, that you're really excited about, or anything that you want to tell people about? I mean, without giving anything away, black the black phone is just. Um, I think it's going to be one of those films where, like, maybe 10, 15 years down the road, people are going to be like either slept on it and now they're discovering it or they're just going to say out and out that it's a classic. Uh, I think it just does everything right. Uh, I mean, it didn't re rewrite the wheel or anything, but it just, it, it set the tone and just, it, it takes place during the seventies and it just feels that way without hitting you over the head. And awesome. just the acting, the acting alone is something that should be put up on a shelf because the, the kid actors and, and Ethan Hawke is just phenomenal. That's what I've been hearing a lot is everybody like everywhere on social media. My friends groups are all like, it's a really good movie. It's well written. Um, and I, I th it was based on a short story too, I, I believe. So for them yeah, to like make Hill. it, yeah. make it into like a full length thing is, is really, really cool. And that's kind of been happening a lot with films lately that they're taking like, you know, smaller projects and making them a lot bigger. Um, and I like that about, about the horror, um, you know, um, genre as of right now, especially and all the things that are going to shutter, um, is insane. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. insane. Well, it's cool that they have filmmakers have an outlet now where they don't need to fret that if it's going to get a theatrical where it's like, oh, we could just go to shutter and shutter's killing it lately. And mm -hmm. they have so many subscribers that they're, they're getting their, uh, their art out there for people to see. Yeah, exactly. And um, I kind of like to take it back to the beginning with, um, you know, our fellow horror um, community, especially with you, Chris, since you're in, you know, really in the line of work for horror. You have everything you're dealing with licenses all the time. You're making all these awesome products. I actually have um, the Day of the Dead cards right here that, that was released. Um, I haven't even opened up all the packs. I haven't. I've only opened up a couple of them just to see what's in there. Um, cause uh, you know, as a collector, sometimes things go up to get price. that autograph. Yeah. Yep. I do. <laughs> yep. It's awesome. And, uh, I think I had, um, one of the, uh, the, um, cards that was used for production too behind me somewhere, but I don't know where oh, I the plates. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's in an envelope behind me somewhere. I'm like, I'm like, don't touch this. Don't do anything with that. Just keep it over there. So that's really, really cool. But, um, let's start, um, way back when, like what got you into horror? Um, was it something that you saw as a child or was it later in life? Um, my, uh, my old man, my dad, uh, he grew up during the, the heydays of the, of the Universal Monsters movies being on late night on, on a UHF channel. And, um, any of my likes, uh, or proclivities to collecting all come from him because he, 
that's just was his mentality and and collecting VHS or model kits. And I just glommed onto that. So at a young, young age, I mean, I was six when I saw Christine in theaters. So that oh, was wow. my first R rated film. And he knew I was able to handle the, those kinds of stories and just know that this is all fake and don't take it too seriously. And, and that's, you know, that's where the love came from. So uh, I remember, when Halloween first premiered on regular TV, I was not allowed to watch it and uh-huh. I had to go in the other room, but I still managed to like crawl my way into the living room to just kind of peek and see <laughs> certain scenes. And uh, that just took me, I was like, what is like, I'm being told I'm not allowed to watch this thing. So he eventually lamented and said I could watch it. And I guess the rest is history. But, I mean, he didn't really, like it was years before I finally saw Texas Chainsaw. He, he there were certain things he held back yeah. on. Like I didn't see The Exorcist till I was super late to that party. So he oh, knew yeah. which that's ones I could handle. One. Yeah, yeah, that one. Like compared to Halloween and Texas Chainsaw, I feel like right. that one will definitely like throw you through a loop if you're not right. ready for it. You know, especially <laughs> at that age. Um, I, I have a four year old son, and like um, I do a lot of horror stuff with him. I don't really let him watch too many movies um i let him do like the more like family friendly ones like he's seen sure. like elvira and stuff like that and and what it is monster like, squad like, or yeah. yeah monster squad he loves monster squad so much um i even i showed him frankenstein like the original one oh, the universal sure. yeah. and he loved that one so um and he watches a lot of youtube stuff and people reviewing costumes he's four years yeah. old and like he's out here making like statues of like jason and and michael and stuff he takes like all my masks that i have over here because I, <laughs> I i'm a huge halloween fan i love michael myers um that's that was like the movie that turned me into a horror fan even though when i was younger uh, i was scared of everything um i didn't really break out of that mold until i was about um 14 or 15 and really starting okay. to embrace it um, like I watched Halloween, but I, I couldn't finish it my first time through cause I was so <laughs> <We're> scared. <laughs> I was like, no, no. It took me about three or four tries to really get through it. And I watched it with my mom and, um, that just stuck with me. And it's my favorite movie. I watch it all the time. It never yeah. gets boring to me. Even um, when it's not Halloween, I could put that on. And- yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, and that's what I do too. And, um, like I'll have him like watch bits and pieces of it if it's nothing like, you know, that will scare right. him too much. Like anything that's like in a daylight, I'm like, oh, this is, you know, this one. And he's like obsessed with Michael Myers so much. And he hasn't even seen the movie. Uh, so, and, and he like tries well, to quiz me too on like what, <laughs> what he wears and like what, what he uses. I'm what like, what color is his overalls? Yeah. It's, it's so funny. And he's only four and, and he's so smart. Um, and I brought him to actually his first horror convention a couple months ago and he loved oh, it. Nice. Yeah. It, it was, it was awesome. So I'm um, seeing him grow up. Um, not being afraid of these things like I was as a kid, it, it makes right. me feel really, really good. <laughs> well, well, I have two kids. So my son, he was the firstborn. Uh, my thing was I would record all the AMC edited for TV versions. Oh, that's a good idea. So that was like a gateway thing. And then we would watch all the YouTube behind the scenes stuff, uh, like the Scream Mad George Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 effects videos and just to see how things were made because then he was able to decipher like this is make-believe and you know this is how they did this and this is how they do that and then i have a daughter and she was not into horror but (laughs) she's starting to come around uh i mean stranger things was her gateway and now she you know we watch scream and i mean she's not going to watch them all like there's some stuff that she just will, will avoid but there's the more accessible stuff she's into now so yeah, I feel like definitely Stranger Things is a gateway for a lot of people now. Because um, it is horror, it's a lot of sci-fi. Sci-fi, yeah. It's just because it has so many other things mixed in with it. It's very palatable for people that it's not yeah. too overwhelming. Even though the fourth season, I think, is is way more horror than I think any of definitely. the other no, I mean, seasons. It's, it's essentially a, a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Oh, exactly. And I mean, yeah. you have Robert England in it, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it, there's a lot of like nods and stuff to it. So, to see that there's mainstream outlets you know allowing um younger people to be comfortable watching 
scary things. There's a lot of, a lot of people are like, uh, that's a little too much for me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle that, but like everybody's talking about stranger things and it's, right. it's really, and, well, really and cool. It's, it's a gateway to music that they've never heard of and just the yeah. nostalgia. So yeah. you can connect with your child because that's what I grew up with. And then I can explain to her that this scene harkens back to dream warriors when <laughs> Freddie first sees Nancy for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so cool. Um, and I don't know. I feel like this generation that we're in right now in horror is a pinnacle. I think um, it's not really reinventing the wheel at all, but it's just making things way more accessible. And I mean, your yeah. company with Fright Rags, you guys are definitely you know a part of that as well. You no, know, I'm wearing you no know, my H2O Michael nice. shirt right here <laughs> that I love so much. Um, and you're, you're always dropping new stuff, um, and it's so cool. Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, how did you get involved with Fright Rags? Where did you know Ben previously, or, or like, how did this all um come about to be well, the it's... production manager? <laughs> it's <laughs> one of those weird kismet stories where, uh, he had his uh, what would Jason do shirt featured on Thirty Rock. So okay, yeah. when that appeared on Thirty Rock, he, he got interviewed by newspapers and the TV, and uh, when I was. I, for many years prior to Fright Rags, I worked at a movie theater and I thought it'd be cool if maybe he set up a table and sold his shirts at the movie theater. So I emailed him and said, listen, I work at a movie theater. If someday, if you want to like display something or we got like a glass case, you could just put some shirts in to show off because it's cool that you're local. Uh, that'd be cool. And he replied and said, yeah, I would love to do that. And at the bottom, this is when he was working out of his house, he had his address, and it was very similar to my wife at the time's grandparents hmm. address. I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> I was like, is what's your grandparents street number? And it was the next door neighbor. <laughs> oh, wow. That's hilarious. So Ben lived next door to my, my uh, ex wife's uh, grandparents. And I was like, do you know Mary Lou and Carl? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, so it's just one of those, I don't know, that's serendipitous funny. moments. Yeah, that's so, really funny. <clears throat> so <Small> he, <laughs> yeah. So he came and he set it up and, you know, and then there would be local things that Fright Rags would do at the record shop here. And I would show up and just develop a friendship. And then as the business got bigger, he needed help folding shirts and shipping shirts. And I, I just got brought into the fold. And it became my second job. And then it came to a moment where we were just like, I think I need you full time. And um, <laughs> <laughs> the elation over my face, like, finally, this is <laughs> this is what it comes to, because I was just over the whole movie theater business and customers. And we don't need to go into that. But yeah, <laughs> it was just like, I'm just I'm just done with this. And it just came at a perfect time. And the rest is history where, you know, for the last geez at this point is it four or five years i've been full-time at fright rags and that's it's, awesome it's a dream come true it's it's the best job it allows me to do you know creative aspects that i never thought i'd be able capable of working at a movie theater all those years and also dealing with like your, your favorite movies too and licenses yeah. and, and you know having those connections too i imagine is is really really Just cool creating merchandise for movies that i grew up with and know like the back of my hand it's just it's, and then meeting these celebrities and people and working with you know yeah i'm not gonna name drop but <laughs> it's cool like like i just emailed so and so it's like oh, what like this yeah. is my life now and it's 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 fun i mean it's it's not easy it's hard work there's there's weeks where it's just you're just going rare because you can't get something approved or they have notes and mm -hmm. you're not getting feedback or no one's getting back to you to say anything. It's like, Argh. yeah. And then you got to meet the deadlines to order shirts and just get them up on the site so we can start earning residuals for people. Yeah. I imagine that can be really stressful. I mean, especially this day and age, because everything is so, um, you know, uh, very high in quality as well, especially your shirt. So I know you guys are always trying to push for oh, yeah. the there's highest competition. possible, you know. I mean, like, we're in a market where there's so many different companies and you're just... Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You guys and Cavity Colors are the, the two that I buy the most from. Um, so you, I imagine that competition 
is is pretty pretty um you know high because they're always releasing stuff too and i know it takes a while <laughs> sometimes for things to come around with you guys but like you said it's with licenses you have all these deadlines um you have to make sure you're, you're getting you know feedback from the uh the companies that are letting you yeah. you know take the licenses and stuff <clears throat> um and just seeing the stuff that you have coming out now is is really cool um there was one collection that um, I, I wanted to wanted to get. I forget what it was. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago, I think. Oh wait, no, it's right here. It's the Dark Crystal one. Yep, just I haven't came out paid this yet. week. Yeah, I haven't gotten <laughs> paid yet. So I'm like, I'm looking at those. I'm like, please don't sell it. Please don't sell it. Please don't sell it. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, this shirt's so cool. I go to buy it, and it's just like, oh, damn it, it was too late. You know, and that's another thing with with these um these, with the companies that you guys are running. It's just it's. Know, everybody wants it because it's so yeah. freaking cool and all the variants they have coming out as well is, is really really cool um so i wanted to ask you um out of all of the collections that you that have came out um especially with you being there and being there full time now is there one that you liked the most and that you'd want to bring back if it's not um still there hmm. well we still have them on the site but i really have fun when we do our our parody shirts Oh like, yeah. Uh, this this past April Fool we did uh we did mashups with uh like turn like what if a horror film was a comedy or just just trying to have fun. Um like we did uh let's see Silver Bullet, but it was the purple rain poster and yeah. Uh, it's just I love just those deep dives and just having fun with stuff that normally you can't do with a license because they're not gonna allow it, but um hmm. Yeah, it's uh, Dream Warriors ma mashed up with the Warriors and such. So. Yeah, that one was really, really cool. Um, I, w I, just, I always get so upset, though, because I always see these ones, and I'm just like, damn it, I need to get money now. I need to get paid. I want to <laughs> see these shirts. Um, and they're, they're so good. They're all high quality. Um, your sweatshirts are super comfortable, too. I, I wear you. those, like, almost year-round because um, they're not so heavy. that they're, they're light enough for you to... You know, kind of wear whatever you want and and i really really like well, that i mean we're looking at it for we're fans too so yeah we don't want to put out a poor quality item because you know if we weren't working for fright regs and we bought something we certainly don't want to get something and it falls apart and the, the you know the screen printing's no good so we're we're in that headspace where if i was a customer what would i want to see what would i want to buy exactly and um Another thing too is um, I was talking to actually a friend of mine, Jason Miller. Um, he did actually yeah, art, yeah. the art for your your Chucky cards, and we were we were yep. talking about that for a little bit. Like I'm like, how did you come about working with Fright Rags? They're like the biggest in like the horror merchandise universe right now. Um, so that was a really fun fun thing to talk to him about. So how did you come across across Jason and and, and have him come work with you guys? Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm on social media as well. So I, I pride myself on trying to find new talent and cultivate that and get them uh, to work with us uh, because I, I, that's something I take pride in is just getting somebody a, a cool job to have. Like yeah. you know, I have a cool job. So it's like, they, they probably never thought like, Oh, Chucky cards. I never thought I would do artist renditions of that so it's fun to work with these people and then develop friendships as well uh, uh it's just I mean, yeah that's that's pretty much it i scoured instagram and and plus trading cards are so big now so oh yeah the sketch card market is is very prevalent and it's all over if you just put in the right hashtag yep um and the other thing too is um jason is actually going to be doing some uh some art for our show over here as well. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, like how um, Jason's you know doing stuff with uh, with a friend of mine, um, Dean of the Dead. Uh, he does a lot of like his his art for his bottles, and he also did a comic book strip for that. And seeing oh, him nice. also be in the world of, of Fright Rags and doing a bunch of other trading cards and doing his his own comics, which actually he does. I was not have everything uh... fall was the 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 two, the two hell um comic book that he just did yeah, was really yeah. really cool. Um, so you just sent that one over to me. So it, it's such a small world because um, I had no idea that he was he was part of like doing trading cards and stuff with you guys. So that was that was really really cool. I mean, I wish we did more sketch, but the it's not an easy process again with 
with approvals that it's it's kind of a pain in the butt but I, I hope we can do some in the future or just have them do designs or anybody yeah, that'd be we're awesome. always on the lookout you're doing a lot more novelty stuff now too with like you know um glassware and, and socks yeah. and and hats um i actually got the you released a um a halloween like haddonfield a varsity jacket um the not jacket, that long ago. Yeah. i have that one in the other room and it's so comfortable i'm like this is the best with purchase so, with I made. so much <laughs> with so much competition you gotta kind of outside of the box and have more items see when you've done a license like, like halloween like eight times already yeah. that's a lot of shirts so you got to start thinking like what else could we do for that yeah yeah and that was definitely you know i, I think probably one of the best products i i bought that year um still wear to this day it's, it's absolutely amazing um still holding up the patches are strong yeah. Yep. Everything is perfect on it. I don't think anything okay. has fallen. I think actually I got one rip, but it was on my part by accident because I ran into a shelf somewhere and it, it ripped a little bit. But um, I'm going to sew that one back together. <laughs> um, since you guys do so many collections, is there a, a license um, out there or, or anything that you haven't done yet that you would like to do? I mean, that's the... <laughs> That's the easy one. It's it's either Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh yeah. Um, we, I mean, in the past, way 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 many many years ago, we did unlicensed stuff. But at this point, we just can't do that unless it's a parody, uh, and we want to do it correctly. But we just every year Ben tries to get into Warner Brothers, and they just like we don't we don't need more people to do shirts. It's like, okay but we're going to keep trying. It's our white whale. Yeah, I mean, I guess just keep trying, but I know a lot of them can be a little stingy and, and whatnot, but hey, maybe one day they'll be like, yeah, you know what? We, we finally want to work with you guys, so um, here you go. We'll have you do Nightmare or um, whatever. Well, it's crazy because <laughs> we've, we've worked with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. We've... Yeah, I mean... There's so many out there as well, um, especially with you know all the um, the ones that are going to Shutter right now, like all the Shutter exclusives and stuff like that. I think that would also be kind of a um, a cool thing for you guys to tap into as well as like reaching out to some of the um, people who are over there. Like a movie that's released that's uh, my favorite movie of the year is um, Revealer that just came out, and uh, I've talked to the the crew over there out, for. Yeah for uh, a while and they they're so awesome and down to earth i think you guys would do really really cool stuff for them um if that was something that uh, i don't know fright rags and ben and yourself would like want to do but i don't know this is so much out there for for you to pull from you know it's it's an uh never-ending like river of uh of this content and awesome movies and stuff to come hey, that's, out that's good yes yeah <laughs> that's good for us <laughs> yeah exactly I, and dropping that i mean we did uh we did shirts for host and we did shirts for yes. scare packages uh the hardest part about that is as cool as doing that stuff is there is so much content that by the time we do get a shirt out, everybody's moved on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is kind of like you know the uh, I guess the silver bullet in a way right there. Yeah. So always doing something and someone's always ahead of you or something else that just came out there. Everybody's like, yeah, I want this instead of instead of that, you know. Um, so we make scare package shirts, so then people are like, yeah, but I I'm on to this movie now <laughs> yeah, well scare package 2 is coming out <laughs> that's true that's true yeah, yeah so you, there you go you can get that one <laughs> um so since there is so many other um you know horror merchandise um especially like um clothing companies out there what puts fright rags on a top like if you had to pitch this to somebody and and be like yeah we're better than everybody what would you say would make you uh better well not really better but just on top that everyone to go to well we're, we're very humble company so i don't know if we would really <laughs> suit that but uh i think my biggest thing is we're just we're fans too 
and uh, we want to put out the best possible products for fans. And uh, you can see that in our customer service. Uh, we've got a team that just go above and beyond. And that's what Ben strives for to make sure that, I mean, if something's wrong, we're going to take care of it right away and not, you know, not answer an email or not talk yeah. to these people. We want to make sure that these people come go away happy. I mean, it's sometimes there'll be ones that are just, it's hard to please, but more oh, often yeah, than sure. not, our, our, our team of, uh, of ladies are, are on top of it and making sure that everybody's getting their products and, and happy. proud to show them off on social media and being fans too and wanting cool cool shit <laughs> yeah and um that's another thing too with the website as soon as you go on there it always always asks you what can we help you with today here's who is working there right now that you can talk to so it's so friendly yeah. so user friendly and you know customer friendly that you want people to you know like your products like immediately and want you to get suited with something that you like and um, always want to, like, they'll ask you, like, oh, what's your favorite movie? We can point you into things that are like that, or here is what we have out right now. And that's what I really, right. really like about Fright Rags, is I don't see that a lot in other companies, is that you really do you know, put a lot of pride into everything that you do over there. And, um, like, thank you for, you know, being um, yes. one of us, you know? <laughs> I appreciate well, we appreciate you and all our customers. Yeah, pride, pride is such a that's a great buzzword because when I worked at the movie theater, I I, I didn't have pride in my work because it was mm. like where, where are you working? I'm like I'm still at the movie theater, but now <laughs> I'm just I'm so proud to tell people what I do and where I work and tell them about the job and they seem interested and want to hear stories and so it's it's yeah pride is is the word that's that's perfect. Yeah, and um, yeah, like thank you for for doing that. And I am always so excited when I see that you guys are dropping something, um, like the RoboCop stuff that that was on there, um, and it's still on there. It's so badass! Like that's <laughs> a big one. That's that's a real big license that's, right there. That's favorite of mine. And I was so glad we were able to do the six thousand suck shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, because originally we weren't allowed to do that because they thought like we had to prove like what the car brand is but <laughs> more and more they're letting us uh, do more stuff because they they trust in us and know we can put out the good stuff yeah and that's a good thing that there you know people are starting to trust you a little bit more too because i think you and fright rags are definitely the biggest out there right now i mean a lot of people are trying to you know say that they are like you got like terror threads you got you know cavity colors and so many oh, other ways yeah. you know but, but it's 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 so cool that we're we're all able to fit in this space yeah and uh and we know some of the other companies and we're happy to, to work with them and just they're doing their thing and we're doing ours and and you guys are the ones that are winning <laughs> yeah exactly like, so many options awesome stuff and then you know, like, other companies have certain licenses we don't have but then you know we all have the same license, but we're all, it's crazy how we're all doing just different stuff and still mm -hmm. able to pump out like good product. And, and so, yeah, you guys have too much <laughs> to pick from now. And, but, but you guys are the winners because you, you have so many different options and cool shirts and different products, socks and oh, yeah. hoodies. And so it's, it's, it's good. It's a good time to be a horror fan. Oh yeah, it definitely is, and I I'm a sucker for novelty stuff like cups and and hats and pins and and all that oh, stuff. We man. got some we got some cool stuff coming out in the next couple months, so you'll be happy. Ooh, <laughs> I'm gonna be keeping my <laughs> eyes open. Don't don't you worry. Um, but yeah, this this like going through because I'm on the site right now to see if there was anything new that I have missed. But just this is well, so we got our, much. Tomorrow we got our we got our polo shirts. Ooh, oh hell yeah. So for the for the business casual work day, you can strut in rocking your uh, Halloween or Jaws or They Live or Night of the Living Dead polo shirt. Oh yeah, I have a couple of pairs of um the lounge pants too are so comfortable. Nice. I, have, I have like the Elvira oh, so ones. Good. Oh my god, I'm I'm a sucker for being as lazy and looking as lazy as possible. <laughs> and uh, you guys got definitely you fulfill then. that. You fulfill that one hundred percent. 
um <laughs> like the socks too are so comfortable i got um oh, i love i love coming up ideas for the socks and we got we have this one artist matthew skiff who just knocks it out of the park uh I just give him an idea and he just runs with it. And then uh, our fellow uh, Joe guy, he, he does some socks for us as well. And it's, it's, yeah, it's just fun because we're creating things that you never thought would ever exist. Like who doesn't want slumber party ma- massacre socks or I know, right. <laughs> uh, I got Children the, of the corn socks. I think, I think I got the, um, the night breed ones that you had were so comfortable. I still have them. And then I, um, I wear them almost every single day. That was oh, the the, the Dexter the Dexter ones. Yeah, and I also have the the baseball shirt and the um uh the variant like the X Men one that you guys did for that one. That yes. one's so yep. sick. That uh, that's that's my favorite one that I own right now. I love the oh, one Nightbreed was just on Joe Bob, so I made sure to tweet that oh, that yeah. image out because that that was that was one of my favorite ideas. Was I was like this because is so it's just cool. it's just too perfect. It, like yeah so so cool and being able to do a parody of that because it fits so well with that movie yeah exactly you know? <laughs> with the posters behind them that's yeah. slain and yeah it's and so Boone awesome. in the front yeah oh my god these dark crystal ones like dark crystal is like one of my favorite movies um growing up as a kid so i know nice once i get paid tomorrow it was it was well received we were very happy i mean it's it's a 40 year old property but it's still uh, on the fringe a little bit. It, not many people, like if you went up to a bunch of kids, they're not going to know what Dark Crystal is. So I'm glad we're able to put it out there for maybe some people to discover. Yeah, and uh, they did a TV show not that long ago, I think, for Netflix too. That yeah, was actually Netflix, really, yeah. really good as well. So it, it's cool to see that it's you know kind of still alive. Yeah, uh, I have a VHS of it, and it's nice. so <laughs> good. I love that movie so much. So yeah, like it's never ending with you guys, and and that's a really really good thing. Um, and I don't want you guys to ever go away. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Yeah, please, uh, <laughs> I have. I as you can see behind me, I got a I got a collection of dictionary. I got to keep being yeah, yeah, able yeah. to pay for that. So, <laughs> and it's also really funny too going through because when you go like the the about us page and you can learn about everybody that's there, like yourself and everybody else, and it's almost like Halloween. Just any Halloween movie is like somebody's the connector. Yeah. first movie that they <laughs> yeah. saw. I'm like, this is awesome. Um, I love that so much. That's why I don't hate on remakes because that that might be some ten year olds film. Yeah. Like you know, so I I mean that's why they do remakes to to just get them to. I mean, obviously they could see the the old film, but that 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 might not be an appeal to that person at the time. Yeah, kind of uh, making it fresh for them as well. You know. Yeah. And it also it. Yeah. gives you an opportunity to be like, hey, get a new license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got Halloween Ends coming out. I know you guys did the Halloween Kill stuff, so I'm excited to see if that's going to be coming with you yeah. guys. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> no this is, this is <laughs> This is so much. And um, this is, I don't know, I'm jealous, honestly, because I feel like that's such a dream job. I know that you're the production manager, so you deal with a lot of stuff. I would imagine like a lot of weights on you. A lot, of, a lot getting, of layers, yeah. Yeah, with you know trying to get things out. Um, so at the end of the day, when you finally get something finished, you're probably just like, ah, yes, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> well, then it's like keeping an eye to make sure things sell, and if they don't, but if they sell out, ordering more. It's yeah, it's, it's a constant. Yeah, awesome, and um. Having you on here is also kind of a dream come true as well, because I've been, you know, you. shopping, shopping with you guys for a long time, and you know, actually being able to sit down and talk to somebody who is on like um, the crew, on like the the bigger end of the crew, like uh, you know, the head honcho over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know that far, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Actually, another podcast I'm friends with, um, the host that screams. They um talked to Ben not that long ago. Nice. And um. Ben is, he just sounds like such an awesome dude to, to kind of just work with like all the time. I imagine like obviously work, Ben is probably different than casual Ben, but <laughs> he still sounds like he's just an awesome dude to just be around. Yeah, we have our laughs. We have a good time. Um, when we do our terror tweets on Fridays or Saturdays, it's it's fun to let her hair down as, as, the, yeah. as the saying goes and just have blast. And But we try to do cool things at the office as well. We'll have like a barbecue day or we'll do like an ice cream social Uh, we we try to keep it light but then it's business as usual when we got a release and everybody's 
busting their butts, especially during Black Friday, like the amount of orders that come in. And we make it a team. We make it a team effort. We're all in there uh, the next day and just picking orders and and we order pizza. And it's just a it's a, a lot of laughs, but it's it's hard work, too. Awesome. I'm glad that everybody there, you know, is having a good time while doing it. And I want to see more cards. If you guys can do that next I, week. I, okay. All right. Next week I'm, we got uh we got creep show. What? Oh my god! Don't even say that, Chris. My paycheck's gonna be gone <laughs> on that because I'm gonna be buying a, a, a you know a full box like this. Got to get again. the box. Yeah. Yep. Um, I it's was got autographs. I was very hesitant. I'm like, should I even open this? I did it, and I was like. I'm kind of happy I uh, did. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. They're, yeah. You got to get the like the plastic sleeves and put them in. Like that's what yeah. I, I got. Like a huge all these binders to my uh, my right here, just all because I collect trading cards as well. So not yeah. a, not only ours, but uh, you know the old tops. And, and I, I love the the waxing too because it's kind of like a, an homage to how it was back in the day. Um, you know, yeah, everything exactly. now is just it's all like. Super hard can't plastic. do the gum though. We, we people always ask us about the gum, but we unfortunately can't do the gum. Oh, and that, that's <laughs> sad. But uh, yeah, there's have... rule. There's like some weird rule that say you can't put food in. I don't, what I don't if you know sell it separately? <laughs> have them just, just buy it. sticks of gum. Tra- trading card gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just that. Yeah, that's awesome. And like having like a signature in there, and also like getting like a production used um, plate that's really really cool yep. too. Um, so there's a lot of incentives to go and buy, you know, all these like collectible items, uh, whether you want to open them or not. And uh, I feel like it's even like that with the shirts too, because you guys do, you know, limited run ones. Um, yeah. Um, limited edition ones is only a certain amount of, which is really really cool. Um, I always try to get those ones. I mean, I mean, like, I think everybody usually does. Um, but there will be a day where I'm gonna buy a, everything in a collection. I have not done that yet, and that's definitely <laughs> something I want to do is actually buy know every item in a collection um so maybe this year will be i'll I'll check that off my my goal list well there's only uh three dark crystal shirts and the the, the socks so that might be too (laughs) yeah i I get paid tomorrow so yeah i'm probably (laughs) definitely going to be uh picking that up um so yeah i think that's pretty much all that i have to to ask you chris is there anything other than what we have talked about that you want to let everybody know about like any releases that you're able to talk about or, or where you want to point people to go and look on the website right now that you have in stock? Well, like I said, tomorrow we got our polo shirts. Uh, and those look, I've seen them in person. They're awesome. They're very soft and comfortable. Uh, next week, we got our Creep Show 40th anniversary release. Uh, it's a bunch of shirts we've done before, but it, it's been a while since we've released them. But the, the main draw with this collection is the trading cards. And we got a pint class coming out for Creep Show. Uh, and then we got uh, we got Jaws, the Jaws franchise coming out in a couple weeks. We were actually tapping into it's because it's the anniversary. We're gonna do a couple uh, Jaws the Revenge shirts. Awesome. Uh, we got a Jaws part. We got Jaws two shirt, Jaws three D shirt, and and then obviously the the granddaddy. We have a Jaws just regular Jaws shirt. Uh, we got a really really badass Silence of the Lambs release coming out. Our main artist, Justin Osborne, did this uh, Hannibal Lecter design that is just a work of art. And that's uh, going to be at the end of July. And then obviously in the fall, that's our bread and butter. We got hopefully uh, Halloween end stuff and just Halloween, trick or treat, maybe pumpkin head, Night of Living Dead. Oh, yes. It's, pumpkin it's head, just... please. I need more pumpkin head stuff. I only have one <laughs> pumpkin head shirt that I have. Um... And I need more because that's like my favorite creature feature um, film. And nice. Not that many people so are good. doing anything pumpkin head. And, and I don't know why. It must be because the license just might be hard to get or whatnot. No, but it's, uh, I think more people got it nowadays. It's just, it's, yeah. yeah now I, that we have, I need more. <laughs> have it. Yeah, we're going to do it. And right. then we got Christmas and Silent Night Deadline. And we got our board games coming out. Oh, really? Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're so. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited so, right now for the rest yeah. of the year, just because of Fright Rags. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll do it all over again in 2023. So it's it's exciting times. This is awesome. You know, Chris, thank you for, you know, being here and, and chatting for a little yeah, bit. Thank you for helping me. It was fun. Yeah, I miss and, this. I used to do podcasts all the time and 
just life and it's, just, it's hard to get these going. So I, I, it was an honor to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, um, I know we went through some scheduling issues, but we're here. We did it. Yeah, we, we had did a lot it. of fun. Nice. Um, <laughs> I learned a lot about Fright Rags and, you know, a lot of the stuff that's coming out. And, um, yeah, like I said, like you, the company that you guys have is definitely, I think, the best out there. Um, the quality of everything is is amazing. Thank you. You're always keeping up on all the all the really good stuff. Um, I know there's other companies that, that try to do it, but I don't know. I can't really pinpoint anything that I really really like from any other companies. I mean, Cavity Colors sometimes they have some really really cool designs that come out, but I always go back to you guys and yeah. always support you. Um, and it's awesome to you know talk to you and and learn about some of the uh, the stuff that you got going on in the background. So this was super yeah, deep. Behind, behind the scenes, behind the curtain type yes. stuff. Yes, and um, maybe one day I'll get Ben on here. I would love to pick his brain about some stuff too. Or get both of you guys on here and maybe we'll talk yeah. about some horror movies and uh, you know stop talking about work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can do like a top five list or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be that'd be awesome. So, um, yeah, this was definitely a pleasure, Chris. Thank you for you know, taking some time. Thank you for having me. And uh, talking some horror and, uh, and business and whatnot. So this is really, really cool. And hopefully others learn and they go and buy Fright Rags because this is the, the goal for me is to make your company even bigger. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> put, put my kids through college. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this is absolutely awesome. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. So this was the Baron's Hideout Podcast. I was your host, Dustin. And that was Chris Tansky, the production manager at Fright Rags. Go support them buy something but even if it's just a pair of socks it's uh there's a lot of really yeah. cool stuff on the site to go and check out and they're super friendly so thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you next time <laughs>